Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. You know, I got a few bees in my bonnet today. Can you see them up there? What's going on in here? You guys were scheming, weren't you? You're plotting your revenge on me for making fun of you all the time. Maybe I should do something nice for you today. All right, you little monkeys. Don't say I never did anything for you. <laughs> You guys get the bonus. Here you go. Huh. Must be Amazon didn't send them what they wanted. They're pretty ticked. Jeez, I think this red one needs therapy. Seems pretty angry. I remember when our kids were just as happy as these pigs when they got a big box. That ain't the case anymore. There ain't much left. Just wreckage. There's something to be said for the way that we water, which is to pull a hose out and wait for the barrel or the tub to fill up because it gives us a chance to look at the livestock. And that's something that you can miss as a farmer. You know, you need to watch your livestock every day. And standing here while the drum's filling up is a good time for me to look at all the pigs, make sure there's nothing wrong with any of them, see how they're growing. If I just had to turn on a valve and walk away, I might miss that opportunity. Plus, it's not like I really mind pulling a hose out and watering and then draining the hose because there ain't a whole lot to do in February except working in the shop. Pigs, no matter how you do it, they're messy drinkers and they get water all over the place which isn't to their benefit in the winter time. There are some people that would argue that the best kind of farming is all about finding the most efficient way to do things. Well, not in my book. Farming is about watching and observing. Those are slow things, and it helps if you've got something to keep you busy while you're doing it, like <laughs> watering the pigs. My life ain't all about finding the easiest way to do something, that's for sure. Heck, sometimes you find the easiest way to do something and then from then on everybody demands that you do it the easiest way. That's why I think that the way the world's going is kind of a race to the bottom. You know, a FedEx showed up the other day to deliver some tractor parts. FedEx used to be this spotless service. Drivers in uniforms, always clean trucks, no dents. This truck showed up with its rear fender hanging off, the driver got out in a pair of sweatpants. He was just some pimply faced kid. And I thought, what does FedEx come to? No uniform? Then he was such a poor driver, he drove in a snowbank on his way out, and I had to go get the tractor and pull him out. I thought, you know, everything's a race to the bottom. Do it faster, cheaper. And what happens? As consumers, we wind up suffering. But we're the ones who are demanding that. We want it cheaper. So. We're powering the race to the bottom. It's just stupid. It's stupid. There's nothing I can do about it. I guess that's one of the reasons that I don't go out too much anymore. I stay on the farm. If I get ranting here and I'll probably have ice in my hose the next time. <laughs> Pay attention to what I do. Picky cows won't eat all their hay. They leave the stocky stuff. But the pigs, they'll eat most of this. These pigs are at the part of their lives where 
Before this, their pens dry, 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 and then all of a sudden, soaked, and it stays soaked. No matter how much bedding I put into it, they soak it in no time. They eat about half of what goes in, and then they just soil the rest of it. So every day, I'm pitching hay in here. Hey. A man wakes up in the hospital after a serious accident and he says, Doctor, doctor, I can't feel my legs. And the doctor says, I know, I amputated your arms. <laughs> That's awful. That one is pretty bad, isn't it? It might even be below my standards. <laughs> oh, well. So there have been some people that commented on the videos that said that I'm subjecting Hillary to cruel and unusual punishment by making her sit for my jokes and I thought it'd be nice to do a little interview and find out how Hillary thinks about them. <laughs> oh, I think they're funny. Some of them are kind of bad. <laughs> you know what I need is the barn panel that comes out and kicks me in the butt like in the old episodes of Hee Haw after they told the joke. That would be due punishment for me, for all you who hate my jokes. In my opinion, where FedEx went wrong, and this is just my opinion, they did something really well and you knew what they were going to get you if you hired them, that is, a package overnight. Then they got into competition with the US Postal Service and UPS and started broadening what they offer. At the same time, companies like Amazon started hammering on the postal carriers of all the different companies to deliver faster and cheaper and what happens we get crappy service and we all pay for it because we demand the cheapest Ugh. same thing happens with local food you ask anybody they'll say oh yeah i want to support my local farmer when they find out the food's more expensive than walmart most of them disappear. Anyway, the reason I brought y'all up here, aside from my rant and rave, and I don't know how I got off on that, is to show you how much hay we got left. I did a count the other day, and this is all we got, and it's enough to last us till mid-March. Hay feeding season here lasts till mid-April, at the earliest, sometimes late April, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do about hay. I'm starting to call around to other local farmers to see if any is to be had. So far I haven't found any and probably what I'm going to find is going to be expensive. But cows got to eat so that is the problem at hand. Other than that things around here are going just swimmingly. Right Doc? How are you doing? I let them come to me on their terms, not mine. <laughs> See? It takes a while. <laughs> this to me is what farming is all about. It's not some big tractor. There's some more efficient way to do something. This right here, this is where it's at. You're turning into a little character. I used to run to the other side of the barn when I came in. <laughs> 
Some of the keys to making friends with calves are, first of all, to make yourself look small so that you're not towering over them. Second of all, be still, be calm, and let them make the first move. If there's anybody out there watching who's a driver for FedEx, no insult is intended. In fact, it's nothing to do with the driver's fault. It's the company. And the company's being forced to do what it does because of economics. Another day, another batch of parts. First, I got to take these down. I love freshly painted parts almost as much as I love putting them back together. Looks like brand new work then. Fuel tank support. That is a beautiful bright red collection of parts. Red, my favorite color. Next we gotta pick out what to hang next. Well, I know I wanna get these frame rails painted just to get them out of the way. Gotta cover these guys up so they don't get paint over spray on them. This is my second batch of parts to paint. I hung more than the first batch and actually I'm getting down there after only two batches. This is what I've got left. Of these parts, most of them are gonna get painted on the engine. Valve cover, uh, oil pan, these front covers that are down in here, this cover. Um, <clears throat> This steering shaft needs to be welded up and, and then turned on a lathe to bring it back to diameter. These covers go on the engine before they get painted. So really all I have left are some injector lines and various pipes. I gotta take the thermostat apart and check that before I paint it to make sure that it's gonna function correctly. And then the front bolsters under here, I ordered a bunch of parts from Steiner, bushing, seals, bearings, all that stuff to rebuild it and I want to partially rebuild it before I paint it. So that's on hold for now. I'm cleaning up parts and Ezra the cat's here to inspect the work. He comes and goes as he pleases. One of the things I found with a hobby like restoring antique tractors, and this probably applies to a lot of hobbies that require a lot of labor to achieve the project is that you got to love the work as much as you love the finished product. So yeah, I look forward to this running again and I look forward to a bright shiny new tractor. But if that's all I had to get me through while I'm doing all this, which can be tedious work, I probably wouldn't stick with it for very long. I'd get tired of it because I didn't like the work and I was just looking for the finished product. I find the same thing applies to clock repair. I spend hours and hours some winter working on old clocks and I enjoy the work as much as the finished product. I think that's something that's probably lacking in our culture these days. Instant gratification is the order of the day, right? So, you know, it's like playing a video game, you know, you get that instant gratification every so many seconds when you play a video game and it keeps you playing. You don't get it in the same way with this kind of work. Yes, I get gratification out of seeing new parts hung up and painted and shiny. And I also get gratification out of cleaning them and masking them off like I'm doing now and keeping track of all the steps in a complex project. I find that really challenging and at the same time interesting and engaging. Of course, one of the other consequences of just looking forward to seeing it run or all painted and complete is also that you have more of a tendency to cut corners instead of doing things the right way because you're just focused on the end result instead of the process to get there. Here's another batch of shiny parts. Oh man, I love it when I get to this stage. Everybody's out sunning themselves today. Black cows in the sun, that makes a lot of heat. I can feel February sun warm on me even though it's about 20 degrees outside. Y'all remember Sammy the steer, the bottle fed calf whose mom refused him? Well, Sammy's going to the butcher this week or next week and 
he's lived longer than most of our steers. He's over two and a half now. He never grew up as tall as the rest of the steers, but he's filled out well, so it's time for him to go. I can't say that's going to be any kind of a happy day, but it's just part of the farm. <laughs> he's getting that look just like a bull's got. That's one of the reasons he's become kind of dangerous, especially since he's so unshy of people. It gets dangerous when you've got a steer that's not afraid of you at all. In fact, will come up like this. Mama cows are getting pretty round with their calves this time of year. It's nice to see that the animals are all doing okay. You know, there's a lot of screwy stuff going on in the world and I sure am fortunate to live on this place and not be affected by it as much as I might be. And I hope the same for you. I think if we all just keep our heads, we'll be all right. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.